Hey there, good to see you. You probably recognize the building behind me here. It's come to that point where this is the only path I have left to take. And since I enjoy procrastinating, let's talk about the top 10 unskippable levels in Dark Souls. Before getting started with the list, I would just like to point out that I will not be including any areas that are basically glorified hallways or merely boss rooms. Maybe one day that will be content for another list. Also, I have an honorable mention, which is the Crystal Caves. The Crystal Caves just barely count in this category for me because it's a little bit longer than a long hallway and it has a few enemies in it, so it almost counts as a level in my opinion. The things that I do really like about the Crystal Caves, the unique aesthetic, I love the look of just walking around on giant crystals and I simply adore the invisible walkways. It's just like Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade. It's so awesome and I hold my breath every time I cross them. Let's get started. Number 10, the Demon Ruins. It takes a lot to be uglier than Blight Town, but when your entire color palette is comprised of muddy reds and disgusting tans and browns, you've really got a shoe in there. And I'll tell you, if you really think having unique and interesting creatures are great, well, f you. Because what we're gonna do in the Demon Ruins is we're gonna take enemies that were bosses in previous levels, and we're just gonna make them minor opponents in this stage. I know a lot of people might say, that this is a cool thing about the Demon Ruins because it makes you feel a lot more powerful now that you can take out this boss 10 at a time. In my opinion, it just feels kind of lazy and I think it would be cooler to have some unique creatures that are located only in this area. For example, the uh, big caterpillar things that hang out of the ceiling, they're kind of annoying, but they are at least unique to the area, and I appreciate that. I do really like the concept of exploring an ancient ruin. I think that's a cool idea. I just think that the way it was presented could have been done a little bit better. At least it has a skip for Lost Isolith. Number nine, the New Londo Ruins. You know, I still remember that time that I decided to go a different route from Firelink and instead of going to the Undead Berg, I decided to go down and take the elevator and then I wound up on the dismal beach of the New Londo Ruins and there was this vague sense of despair emanating around the area. I remember going around exploring the little staircase to the side and and then we found Rickert, and he, he's so scared that he's got himself locked in a cell. And he, he's talking about being so afraid of everything, I had no idea what kind of nightmare I was about to run into. Then you find this item called a transient curse, and you're like, well, what the hell does this thing do? I haven't found one of these yet. And when you finally get the nerve to run down that wooden walkway, and you run into the ghost. Holy shit, what a moment, right? You find out really quickly that you have to use a transient curse just to be able to attack the ghost. This area can be really scary and intimidating. However, personally, this area turns into frustrating very quickly because of the fact that everything looks the same and it's so easy to get lost that I've actually had playthroughs where I ran out of transient curses and had to leave and go farm souls to go buy that item just to finish the stage. Now that is a pain in the ass. One thing I will say that is pretty cool about this level though is the fact that you can drain the water and discover that you have been basically walking around on the rooftops like Spider-Man the whole level and now you're actually on the bottom floor where you get to meet one of my favorite things ever, the mass of souls, Blech. And then you get to run into the dark wraiths who are just 
the most OP bastards ever who have that dark hand and they can freaking steal your humanity. That's some bull crap. I think that New Londo Ruins is sort of a good level, but there are things about it that really piss me off. The fact that you can't summon in a helper until you've already drained the water, that's the easy part of the level. Once you've drained the water, all you really have to do is deal with the Dark Wraiths and then fight the boss. That's kind of it. The hard part is getting done with the damn ghosts and making your way through that maze and figuring out which switch you gotta turn and where you gotta go. All in all, I would say that the new Londo Ruins is pretty spooky. It's pretty scary and intimidating. It also can be mind-numbingly frustrating. But the reason it's not number 10 is because it is not as boring as the Demon Ruins. Number eight, Dark Root Garden. Dark Root Garden, it's okay. It's not as boring or as ugly as the Demon Ruins, and it's not as frustrating as the New Londo Ruins. And it's nice to be able to run around in the woods and just observe foliage and natural creatures in the forest just for a change, you know, because there's so many old broken up villages and castles in the game that it's kind of a unique area in this game to have a forest level. One really neat thing about Darkroot Garden is that there is a kitty hiding in a window who has the scariest mouth I've ever seen and she can give you a covenant that is called the Forest Hunters and you can join them and you can just participate in ganks just all the live long day because while sometimes it's hard to find a summon in Dark Souls, it is never hard to get invaded in Dark Root Garden. Speaking of cats, I need to point out that there is one area of Dark Root Garden that if you mess up and find yourself in the wrong corner, you get to fight these giant cats that are like the size of a bear. And they have that same huge monster mouth that goes back way too far. And honestly, they should have been on my scariest Dark Souls list. Probably the most memorable part of Dark Root Garden is the awesome ass boss fight against Sif the Great Grey Wolf. Number seven, the Duke's Archives. I have a love-hate relationship with the Duke's Archives because it's a neat concept for a level. I do like the idea of exploring this library and you have these cool trick puzzles like the staircase that you have to rotate. But I seem to always have a hard time with the enemies when I get there. And those crystal skeletons just beat the shit out of me. And I am never prepared when I show up in this place. But the Duke's Archives has some really neat stuff that is only in this level. For instance, it has a callback to the intro of Demon Souls where you go in to fight Seath and he kills you immediately and you have no way out of it. It's just a death that has to take place in the game except this time you spawn at a bonfire that I guess he has linked into a prison cell. That's my logic anyway. I also really like the fact that there's this weird little side mission you have to do where you go up and you turn off a record player that the snake men are using because you know the snake men they love their Perry Como records right am I right also you've got the squiddy waifus just shuffling and moaning about all over the library and it's just it's just great number six the undead asylum the undead asylum is one of my favorite levels in Dark Souls. It's the one that teaches you the ropes, teaches you the basics of gameplay, gets you going with a good foundation to start your Dark Souls adventure. And it feels kind of uh, warm and safe in a way because most of the hollows there are pretty pathetic. Some of them don't even attack you. A lot of them just lean in the corner and cry and shit. And I gotta say, I love, again, 
the way that Dark Souls makes a callback to Demon Souls, except in this, they subvert your expectations because in Demon Souls tutorial, you die. If you manage to kill the boss of the tutorial in Demon Souls, a bigger boss will kill you, so it's mandatory that you die in the tutorial. In Dark Souls, that's not the case. You show up, you see the big demon, and me, being a person who played Demon Souls first, I just assumed I had to die to this thing, but I fought him anyway, but I got killed. And then when I respawned at the bonfire, I said, wait a minute, so I have to kill him? So I kind of freaked out a little bit because I didn't realize that there was a door that was open on the other side of the wall down there. And then eventually, you know, I figured it out. And uh, this was before I got the info about throwing the black fire bombs at the Asylum Demon. That is an easy way to kill them on the first try. All in all, I think the Undead Asylum is a fantastic tutorial level and one of the most well-crafted stages in all of Dark Souls. And I really like those outdoor areas. They look so nice and peaceful. I would totally go hiking there. Number five, the catacombs. I think we all remember that first time that we thought we would be cute and run through the cemetery behind Firelink. And we said, hey, you know what? I can't kill these skeletons, but I might as well run past them and just see what the hell is on the other side of that graveyard. And then what is your reward for juking all the skeletons and getting to the other side of the cemetery? Well, you get a staircase in almost total darkness and then you get these giant red skulls flying through the air screaming at you and they blow up do a crap ton of damage it's just outstanding if you manage to get past the screaming skulls that explode and do a ton of damage well then you get to run into what i like to call skeleton city skeletons are all over the place and the crazy thing about these guys is when you knock them down, they get back up. That's because there are necromancers hidden all over the catacombs. And they're so cool because when you knock a skeleton down, they just use their voodoo devil magic to just bring them back up. What a bunch of swell guys. If you do manage to make it through this area and get past all the skeletons, you'll find yourself in a wide open space. I mean, there's like I don't know if you can see the sky here, but I mean, it's at least opened up a little bit. It's not quite so dark and claustrophobic, and it's kind of a relief until you realize there are more skeletons and, of course, more necromancers. So everywhere you turn, there's a skeleton, there's a skeleton, skeletons all over the place. And then necromancers, they're really hard to find because they like to hide and get in their little strategic places where they can raise the skeletons with their magic and stuff. You've also got these traps in the form of these neat stone statues that will be up on the wall and it's a narrow ledge so you got to be close to the statue and then you're just scooting on across and then every once in a while just spikes come out and damn do they hurt really bad. The catacombs has other neat stuff in it too like there's these weird puzzles where you have to go find switches and turn them figure out where that moved something. Is that a ladder? Can I go up here now? And a hidden bonfire. I think maybe the best hidden bonfire in the game because I played the game many times before I found this Joker. Also, the catacombs has the nicest, most sweetest blacksmith you could ever hope to meet. Also, he scares the shit out of me when he busts through the wall like the Incredible Hulk. There is a hallway that has a Titanite demon just hanging around in total darkness, waiting on you to walk up and get your ass kicked by him. Another thing that should have been on my scariest parts of Dark Souls list. <sighs> that is two now that I have missed. For shame. Another neat thing you can find in this area, the coffin that you can hide inside. You think you're hiding from the Titanite Demon, but what you're really doing is if you lay in there and you have an eye of death in your inventory, Nito's minions will carry you off to his lair and then you can join his covenant and get a cool new spell. Another unique aspect to the catacombs that makes it special is that while you kill necromancers randomly, one of them drops the skull lantern. But we know the skull lantern is dog shit, so 
Don't use it, you want the sunlight maggot, but it is neat that there's a special item here that's only located in this area. Everybody knows that the worst thing in the catacombs that you have to deal with are those damn bone wheel skeletons. Yeah, they suck really hard. We know they suck. They're the worst things ever. Cancel bone wheels. Hashtag cancel bone wheels. A lot of people talk crap about the boss of the catacombs. Pinwheel is definitely a pushover. It almost takes a certain level of skill to actually die to this opponent. But I give Pinwheel credit because while he is a slight annoyance and not much of a challenging boss fight, he has a 33% chance of dropping the mask of the father. And that means giant dad time. Number four, the tomb of the giants. The tomb of the giants also has a really interesting, unique take on the Dark Souls level, which is that it is so dark that you have to have a special item just to see. And even with that special light providing item, you honestly can't even see that much. The um, enemies in the Tomb of the Giants are extremely intimidating, as you would imagine. That giant skeleton that you ran into in the cemetery, well, there's just tons of them in here. In fact, some of them have even learned how to use a great bow. They can pull it back and pop you right off the edge of a ledge into the just total abyss and to an instant death. And even worse, sometimes they can take the bow and pop you off of a ledge into a pit full of giant machete wielding skeletons. Probably the scariest enemy in the Tomb of the Giants though are the skeleton beasts that move around on all fours like big ass bear skeleton monsters. God, I do not like dealing with those guys. Let's see, you got Paladin Leroy, you've got your occurrence of patches in this game where he kicks your ass down into a pit. You do get to find some treasure though, and you get to run into a couple of psycho clerics and whip their ass. There are the skeleton babies, there are the weird skeleton pillars that you have to fight. I think they're really gross, by the way. And uh, eventually you get to run into tons of little pinwheels and gotta kill them, gotta get that mask. Neato, he's a pretty cool boss. When it comes to skeletons and death-related enemies in video games, he is very unique and cool and interesting. I dig Neato and I dig this level. It's hard as hell, but it's pretty badass too. Number three, the Undead Parish. The Undead Parish is a cornucopia of all things Dark Souls. It's the level that if you really wanted to give somebody a good representation of what this game is all about, I think this is probably the best example. First of all, as soon as you enter the parish, you get to meet our homeboy Solaire, who is without a doubt the most renowned, popular NPC of the entire series. Next, you get to encounter this dark red hell kite that just burns fire up and down the bridge, and now you gotta find a way around that. Interestingly enough, this is another callback to Demon Souls, where instead of crossing the top of the bridge, you actually have the option to go underneath it. Upon entering the church area, you see a tower that has a Black Knight, which is probably the most intense Black Knight battle in the entire game because you're in super tight quarters and he has this gigantic greatsword that can hit you pretty much anywhere in the tower. When you get past him, now you have a giant armored boar you have to figure out how to deal with. And if you don't know the little trick of throwing the undead attractant into the fire to make the boar kill himself with fire is just, it's just great. I love doing it every time. Then you get to go into the church. You get to deal with the Balder Knights and they're super badass. You get to deal with that giant knight who's protecting the fire keeper's soul. That's a pretty intense battle for early in the game. Then you have a channeler up top and he's dancing the jig. He's dancing the knight away and he's got you know, 20,000 little naked dudes up there hanging out with him. 
When you get past that, you get to go find Lautrecht hidden in a, a little cell and you don't really know that he's a scumbag yet, but that guy. But you can summon him to help you fight the gargoyles, which is really wild. Not to mention you can get Solaire to help you do it, which is cool. And speaking of gargoyles, the gargoyles in the Undead Parish are one of the coolest boss fights in the game because you get to literally fight a boss who once they get weak enough, they just summon another one to help as backup. Once you kill the boss, you get to go ring the Bell of Awakening and you get to basically trigger the first major event in Dark Souls. And of course, the cherry on top of the Undead Parish is when you ring that bell and you come down those stairs and you get the shit scared out of you by good old Oswald. So now you might be thinking, well, how could a level be any better than that? The Undead Parish has everything a guy could look for in a Dark Souls stage. And my answer to that is, if the stage is really fun, then I'm putting it above that. Number two, Sin's Fortress. Some of you guys might think I'm crazy for saying this, but I actually really love Sin's Fortress. I think it is so fun. The snake men are kind of tough. They're kind of assholes, but it really feels good to just kick their asses off that railing down into the pit. And not only that, you get to find out if you can survive the fall that way down there are titanite demons just all over the place. It's infested with titanite demons in the fortress. And there's, there's all sorts of goodies down there. And if you do manage to go, you can get back up out of there and go back through the fortress like normal if you want. Of course, the star of the fortress is all of the big crazy traps like the swinging blades, the giant balls just rolling around. There's that fun puzzle you get to do where you figure out, okay, if I make the ball shoot out this way, it breaks open a, a wall that goes nowhere. Okay, okay. I break this one. Oh, it killed that snake guy. Awesome. And then you break this one and then you say, oh, wait a minute. There's, there's a dude. There's a dude down here. It's Big Head Logan. What's up? So that's really cool. Another thing that's fun about this level is it's sort of like a Super Mario Brothers stage because you can really train yourself to speed run through this stage and see how fast you can move through the level without getting killed by any of the traps. I just kind of think it's fun to do that. But I digress. There is a whole area outside once you get through with the interior of the fortress where there are giants throwing exploding cannonballs at you. It's just madness. And then when you get to the end of the fortress, you get to fight the Iron Golem who is maybe the funniest boss fight in the whole game because all you gotta do is just keep whacking his shins and then you just make him fall off the ledge like a dumbass. It's fantastic. I love this stage. Okay, so how do you top that? Number one, An Orlando. An Orlando is the level in the game where Dark Souls really ramps up the difficulty it's the level that makes your jaw hit the floor when you see how amazing everything looks. It's the first stage where things look nice. It's just so unusual to see buildings that are not rotted and covered in weeds and grass and corpses. Then when you get there, you find your first weird mystical yellow barrier on the side over there by the Duke's archives. You notice that all the enemies are huge giant monsters. Of course, there's a mimic to hang around at the beginning just to, just to scare the shit out of you. And also, we get to meet our first firekeeper who talks in this game. Next, you get to run into more gargoyles, which will drop the items that the first gargoyle did not drop in the parish. There's a really cool puzzle where you have to turn a platform and figure out how to get to the other side of the city, which is neat. And then when you go inside of all of the big fancy buildings, you run into a whole new kind of knight. And these silver knights, they are really bad ass. And of course, you cannot omit the 
great bow silver knights that will shoot you off of that freaking railing. I don't even know how many times I've died to those things, but they suck. There's an area later in the game where you get to run into Solaire and he's chilling and he kind of flirts with you a little bit. Then there is this super scary tiny church in the building that has a Titanite demon just chilling in a corner by himself, just waiting on somebody to walk into this room so he can smash them into the floor. It's also another pretty scary moment, come to think of it. But I'd say the scariest thing in an Orlando is the fact that there is a basement that has all kinds of gear. In fact, it's got Havel's gear. But there's also that one mimic hiding in that room and it is almost completely dark in there. It just scares the crap out of me every time. Another neat feature of Anne Orlando is mega waifu Guinevere. At least uh, we think that's who she is until we find out that she's just a illusion. But once you knock the illusion out, the whole city goes black and it gets really creepy. Even though there's way less enemies, it's somehow scarier now because it's just dark and empty for the most part. Also, and Orlando has a hidden boss fight in the form of Dark Sun Gwendolyn with his creepy little tentacles coming out the bottom of his dress or whatever he's wearing. And I don't even know how many times I played this game before I accidentally found out how to even fight this guy. There's a giant blacksmith who is enormous, but luckily he's a super chill dude and he hooks us up with some badass gear so we can build Giant Dad. But everybody knows the real crown jewel of this level, and maybe of Dark Souls all as a whole, is the boss fight against Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smo, which is maybe one of the best boss fights ever in a video game. It's definitely one of the best in the series. All in all, I've just got to say that and Orlando is the most amazing, immaculate, complete level that just really takes your breath away and makes you thankful that you're playing Dark Souls. Well, that took a little bit longer than I thought. And I guess it turns out that when I uh, started thinking of things that I wanted to say about the unskippable levels in Dark Souls, I just had a whole lot to talk about. So what did you think about the list? Did you agree with it? Please give me a like if you enjoyed the video. Please comment and tell me what you thought below. Share with one of your friends if you think they might enjoy the content. Thank you guys all so much for the support and for watching and subscribing. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.